Hello everyone, my name is Ayas Karna Pandit and today I'm going to explain the topic of engine policy changes. So let's get started. Okay, so uh, for the engine policy changes, there are four principles of developments. The first one is that the availability and diffusion of high-speed infrastructure. The second one is growth and development of multimedia services. The third one is fair access and use of infrastructure for providers and customers. And the last one is interconnection and interoperability of infrastructure and services. Moving on. Okay, so now let's uh, talk about the services and regulation of uh, the NGN. Uh, from uh, this left side, uh, there are two images. The first one uh, shows the voice, internet, video, broadcasting, and etc. Uh, is going to the same access network. So basically ev uh, everything uh, on this side uh, going to the access network. Which means that NGN made it possible so that we can enjoy multiple things with only a single device. And it could be either your smartphone, laptops, computers, and etc. So before accessing this access network, it goes first into the multifunction terminal. From there, it goes to the access network which is basically uh, an access point or a BTS. From there, it goes to the core network, uh, which is basically the server. Since that, uh, it requires to be regulated by a single regulatory body in the communication sector. And from this image, uh, it is the service capability of NGN. And as you can see, it basically covers almost everything uh, in the networking service, telephone, multimedia, internet, JSM, OMTS, and etc. And for uh, the diagram here, uh, for, from the past and present and to the current era, uh, it shows that f uh, now and from the past, the network is divided into three parts, which are the broadcast regulator, spectrum allocation, and telecommunication regulator and in the NGN era it is far more simplified into only one single body or entity okay now let's move on into uh, issues that may affect NGN and there are three uh, which are simplified there are the economics accessibility and the interconnection for uh, in the econ economics parts uh, there are the competition and the price war competition needs to be regulated by the government to make sure that competition is effective and does not break any uh, rules or create uh, loopholes and this in turn will make sure uh, to stimulate a sustainable growth for the companies for the price war uh, it basically means that each company uh, keep down pricing or selling their product products lower than that of uh, their peer or their competition and vice versa for their co uh, competitors. Uh, by doing the price war, this will cut the profit margin and may reduce the overall quality of the product. And now let's move on into the accessibility. The Currently, the av availability of fiber to the home 4G and uh, 5G is slow. Uh, due, due to it requires a high bandwidth capacity and uh, this technology is only available widely in densely populated areas and the engine access is uh, is potentially divided due to, due to the previous problems and for the interconnection the interconnection between services uh, may be a challenge that needs to be overcome. There are the challenge of converting the switch network into the IP-based network, which I will explain later. Okay, now let's uh, move on into uh, the solutions for the previous problems. And the for the economics part, uh, there are the facility-based regulation incentives and the regulated competitions. Uh, the first one, the, fa the facility-based regulation means that providers are encouraged to provide good network services in order to gain uh, 
good amount of users subscribe to them. Incentives are given to the provider by the government to boost growth in the internet broadband networks. Thus, uh, the company will uh, can have an increase in their numbers of subscribers. For the last one, the regulated competitions uh, by the government is so that there are no monopolies that can be found, rule, rule breakings, uh, so that the growth is sustainable. For the accessibility, uh, there are the fiber to the home, access, fiberization, uh, universal service obligation or USO, and the efficient spectrum uh, management. The the broadening of the FTTH access and the fi fiberization can be done by investment incentive. So uh, that not only densely populated areas that can receive the high speed uh, network. For the USO, uh, it means that the internet providers provide a minimum set of services, uh, and this is different for every country and the regulation and provider for uh, USO in Indonesia is managed by Bakti for uh, com telecommunications in remote areas and in order to obtain efficient spectrum management there are li licensed and unlicensed spectrum uh, they are given by the government uh, and broadband wireless, HDTV, and many more utilizes broad bandwidth spectrum. And to fix the issue, a flexible spectrum assignment needs to be done to improve the economic efficiency. And for the last part, the interconnection, uh, uh, it needs to increase the, in the fi fiberization that in turn will translate to the increase in the interconnection of the NGN. And the next one is the session initiation protocol or the SIP. Uh, it is utilized to exchange telephone number and IP based ad addressing. So uh, that there will be a single address for both the telephone number and the IP, IP address or domain names, which I will explain in a few slides. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to explain uh, about the session initiation protocol or the SIP so uh, here is a schematic uh, for the session initiation protocol uh, basically uh, the telephone number that we use uh, uses a PSTN or public switch telephone network while IP address and domain names uh, uses internet net network and uh, in order to exchange between these two, the session uh, initiation protocol is used. Uh, it is recommended by the ITU uh, that it uh, that there is a number two universal resource identifier. So and uh, this is the example for the phone now for the phone number and it will be changed into the universal resource ident identifier the SIP and moving on into uh, the last part which is the USO or universal service obligation uh, it basically uh, defines that the network providers needs to provide a minimum set of services and uh, these services includes voice and telephone services to all of its users uh, this services is not uh, restricted by the location of the users and this aims to provide uh, the user an avor affordable price for telecommunications and the the, U the USO is different for each and every country and as you can see right here there are examples for in the USA uh, it is a discount for internet access for school and libraries. For in Canada and Australia, uh, there are price subsidies in remote areas. In Switzerland, uh, the price of telecommunication is kept in remote areas into uh, into some amount of Swiss francs. 
and in Indonesia it is managed by Bakti for telecommunications in treaty areas or the terdepan terluar and tertinggal area okay that's all for the presentation thank you for watching